If you're building a SaaS business, one of, if not the most important thing to really nail down, really stress test, really validate is your core idea. Having built SaaS businesses for the last 10 years, having scaled them, having helped exit them and exit my own, I've sort of developed a framework on how to validate ideas. And in this video, I'm gonna walk you through the three principles to actually stress test your SaaS idea. Intro. What's up, everybody? Welcome to Unstoppable. I'm TK, and on this channel, I help star founders like you build and scale unstoppable SaaS businesses. Whether you're in the path to navigate your product market fit, or you're on the path to actually get to the next stage of growth, if you're new to our community, welcome. I drop a video like this every single Sunday, Wednesday, and now Friday. So be sure to hit that subscribe button and that bell icon so that you get notified every single time I drop a video to help you scale your SaaS business with the TK quarantine hairstyle. Also, by the way, if you are building a SaaS business and you don't wanna go at it alone, I will include a link to my SaaS school program. In my SaaS school program, I help founders actually build and scale SaaS businesses. And we're now actually accepting new members. So I'll link to it at the end of this video so that you can check it out. Now, before you go anywhere else, let's dig into the reason you're here, which is how do you actually stress test your SaaS business? Now, after having spent nearly a decade starting my own SaaS business, exiting it, helping exit the one that bought mine, and also helping other founders as part of my SaaS school program really validate and clarify their SaaS ideas and grow them, here's the framework that I follow to really validate an idea. I'm gonna walk you through the three principles. So if you're excited to dig in, go ahead and smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm and really for my team, because we love seeing that. And let's dig into principle number one. So principle number one is, number one, are you solving an important problem? I see this all the time where founders and we're all a very passionate bunch. We get excited about this idea. We're a little unclear on who it solves it for, who our ICP is, but we're like, this is the thing. This is gonna be amazing. We're gonna be cool. And I'll always ask like, all right, for the group of people that would use this, is this an actually important problem? Meaning, is there budget allocated for this? Is there money set aside for this? If they do this, will they save money or make more money? Those are simple questions that you can ask to really hone in on, is this an important problem? Because look, we have a billion problems in our lives and in our businesses, but that doesn't mean we're gonna solve them. It doesn't mean we're gonna buy software to actually spend time and fix those problems. So the first question you really wanna dig into is, this, is this truly an important problem? Once you've dug into that, the next question you wanna ask is, has there been a big change that makes this urgent? Meaning this problem, like I have a lot of problems in my life and my business that are there and they may be important, but they're not urgent until something happens. Something happens and all of a sudden I'm like, oh my God, we better solve this. Otherwise we're gonna be in deep trouble or we're gonna lose this or we're never gonna be competitive enough. So is there some sort of big macro trend, some big change, some big threat that's happening that makes it where not only is this an important problem, but all of a sudden it is actually an urgent problem. An urgent and important problem is where the opportunities truly lie in getting the attention of business owners and other people that are using your software. So the first two is, is it, is it an important problem and is it an actual urgent problem that's powered by some sort of big macro trend, some big change that's happened in the world. One example for this is say uh, remote, remote offices and remote collaboration. Every single company has been thinking about how to actually go digital, how to drive their digital transformations, which takes decades. And all of a sudden, because COVID-19 happened, all of a sudden that problem became very, very urgent. Not only was it an important problem to stay competitive in the market and the workforce, but also at the same time, it became urgent. They could not do business otherwise. And what happened? All of a sudden, every single thing that solved the remote collaboration problem became top of mind for every business leader. And all of a sudden, digital transformations, which would normally take billions of dollars and tens of years, got done in two minutes by downloading Zoom. That's a perfect example of actually how important and urgent is super important if that makes sense. <laughs> and also on top of that, finding a macro trend that's proving that this is an important and urgent problem is super powerful. Now, before I go on to number three, and I have a bonus one for you, let me just pause here for a second. If you're starting to think about your idea and you're starting to think about whether it's important and urgent, and if it is important and urgent, can I just get a yes in the comments below so that I know you're with me? 
And if it's not yet, don't worry. I actually have a 10 point checklist on how to start and build a SaaS business and how to hone in on the right idea. I'll tell you more about that at the end of this video. Okay, so let's now move on to number three. Number three is, has there been a tech breakthrough? Is there some sort of big platform shift or big technology shift that makes your solution a better solution right now? So even if a problem is urgent and it's important, if you can't come up with a solid, great, awesome, easy to use solution to solve it, people are not gonna pay you money. And usually the opportunities for this come around when there's some sort of big platform shift. So one big platform shift was actually going onto the web, right? Instead of on-premise software, instead of downloading software into a floppy disk and shipping it, and then you have to install it in your own data centers, there was the web and you could host software online and people could just log in and use the software. That's one big shift. Another big shift was social. Another big shift was mobile. Those were all big platform shifts that allowed you to create new software that solved these urgent and important problems in a whole new way in a whole new cost structure, in a whole new way, level of efficiency, or in a whole new level of feature set that made it a better solution. And what you ended up with was an urgent and important problem with a big tech breakthrough that made it like, wow, we have to leverage this, otherwise we are gonna get disrupted. And that's why businesses started buying a lot of SaaS software. So the question becomes, do you have all three of these things? These three things is a trifecta. When they are, it is an important problem you're solving, when it is an urgent problem, and when you have better solution because of some technology breakthrough, that's where the magic comes. Those are the three things that you have to stress test for your idea. If it doesn't, if it's not urgent, if it's not important, if there's not a macro trend around it, and there's not some big new way, new technology breakthrough that allows you to deliver this in a really compelling way, don't bother. That idea is not gonna go anywhere. Now there's one more thing that I wanna to add to this. I promise you a bonus. The last thing, the bonus one that I actually wanna tell you is that the market will tell you very quickly. A lot of us think that, you know, if we just slog away on the idea, this one idea I've got over and over and over forever, then finally we'll break through. This is a common misconception. Yes, it does take persistence to get to something that works. However, if you keep honing in on the same idea and the market just keeps saying no, keeps saying no, keeps saying no, chances are the idea is either bad or the timing's completely off. And your best bet is to keep pivoting to actually fit into something that people want. And usually people want something that solves an urgent and important problem in a whole new way, and that way they can actually save money or make more money, especially when it comes to business software. So listen to the market. Even if you have deep conviction, and you should, you should still time box your approach on how long you stick to one idea. And you should carefully listen on what's actually being said by the market, whether they like it and if they don't like it and what they like and don't like and what's the reason for buying is. And that will help you actually identify whether you've got the right idea. So just to recap, those are the key things that you should look at to validate your idea as you start a SaaS business is what I did when I started my recent SaaS business. Number one, are you solving an important problem? And if so, for who? Is it urgent because of some big macro trends, some big change that's happening in the world? And number three, can you solve it in a uniquely great way because of a recent technology breakthrough? And lastly, can you take it to the market so that they'll tell you very quickly. How do you actually talk to people in sales conversations so that you can actually validate this very quickly? When you have that, you end up with the trifecta, you end up with the kill zone, which is all the money in the world because you're solving a very important problem that's urgent and with a great solution. Now, if you are building a SaaS business, whether you're just starting out in the journey or you're in the point where you're trying to get to product market fit, I encourage you to download my 10 point SaaS business checklist. In that checklist, I'll go through the 10 key points, bigger than this, even more, it builds on this, the 10 key questions to actually ask and answer so that you can really validate and hone in on your core SaaS idea. It takes you everything from having a market strategy to a product strategy to a go-to-market strategy so you can actually test your idea very quickly. So you can go down and follow the link below. It's my 10 point SaaS checklist or you can just go to tkgator.com slash SaaS dash checklist. Go there, you can download the guide, it's completely free, and I'll walk you through the whole process. And lastly, if you got value from this, please be sure to smash that like button. We drop a video like this every single Sunday, Wednesday, and Friday, so be sure to hit that subscribe button and that bell icon, because we wanna partner with you to actually grow and scale your SaaS business. And lastly, remember, everyone needs a strategy for their life and their business, but when you are with us, yours is gonna be unstoppable. I'm TK, and I will see you in the next episode. Thank you.